Taiwan, a sovereign island state or a breakaway province of the People's Republic of China that must inevitably return to mainland control. As the battle intensifies to influence Taiwanese hearts and minds on this question, we've been to investigate the tactics of those to whom reunification is only a matter of time. Asia's most vibrant democracy is feeling the heat from an increasingly powerful neighbor that claims it as a renegade province. Over the past two years, we have faced increasing pressure from China as they threaten our dem democratic way of life and limit our international space. The two sides share a complicated history. A civil war in China drove the fleeing nationalist army to Taiwan in 1949. It's had its own government since, its own laws, and lately, freedoms not seen in many parts of Asia. And yet, formally, Taiwan is not a country. Taiwan, as a country, Supporters of unification between China and Taiwan insist both sides agreed in 1992 that there is only one China. But within Taiwan, the so-called 1992 consensus is the subject of much debate. We have had a meeting with Tensions have escalated since President Chai of the independence-leaning Democratic Progressive Party took office. Both sides ramped up military activity in the Taiwan Straits after Beijing cut diplomatic contact in 2016. China also forced a string of airlines and companies to amend references to Taiwan on their websites. Taiwan, so a small place, if you want to fight, 一定是森林塗炭。我想，同樣兩岸都是中國人，不願意看到這件事情發生。Frostier relations with China come amid a strengthening of ties with the United States. Officially, Washington agrees with Beijing that Taiwan is a part of China, but unofficially, it's one of the island's main allies. This year. The U.S. opened a new $255 million complex in the capital, Taipei. It also committed to stronger military support for Taiwan and passed a bill encouraging visits between officials from both sides. As we dedicate this building... I don't think my president wanted to choose sides between China and the United States. But the situation needs to be at least controllable, manageable, so we are walking on a tight rope. For the Chinese Communist Party, a campaign to win the hearts and minds of the Taiwanese people continues. Earlier this year, Beijing announced its so-called 31 measures, placing certain Taiwanese businesses and individuals on an equal footing with their Chinese counterparts. Within Taiwan, China is also making its presence felt. People in Power investigates the fringe political groups working with Beijing. We find out some of the ways China gathers information inside Taiwan. Ahead of local elections at the end of the year, there are fears things could get even more intense. They showed up just after six in the morning. 
Pro-unification politician Wang Bingzhong says he was completely unprepared. What followed was live streamed by Wang on his Facebook page. The standoff, which lasted 40 minutes, ended when police broke the lock. The raid might not have happened were it not for this man. Zhao Hongshu, a Chinese citizen and former student at one of Taiwan's best universities. He spent 14 months in jail for attempting to recruit spies for Beijing, a charge he continues to deny today. Zhou Hongshu is the focus of everyone. Among Zhou's alleged collaborators, Wang Bingzhong. When we meet again, it's at a hastily called press conference. Wang, his father, and two members of his political party have just been indicted and are awaiting trial. But prosecutors insist the three politicians took money from the Chinese Communist Party with former student Zhao Hongshu acting as middleman. The National Chengqi University is where he got his postgraduate degree. Zhou declined our request for an interview, but we managed to speak to a former exchange student at one of Taiwan's other universities. She's asked that we hide her identity. Amy says she quickly suspected something was wrong, but government officials wouldn't leave her alone. Three PM on a weekday afternoon outside the presidential palace in Taipei, and this is a regular sight. Members of the Concentric Patriotism Alliance are on their way to one of the city's best-known landmarks, Taipei 101. Here, they broadcast their message on unification to tourists from mainland China. And they take on followers of the Falun Gong spiritual movement, who are publicizing the plight of their fellow practitioners in mainland China, where the group is outlawed. Today's exchange ends peacefully. But that hasn't always been the case. The Concentric Patriotism Alliance's members regularly feature in online videos like these. Their targets include pro-independent supporters, democracy activists, as well as the Falun Gong. Several of their members have been convicted of assault. Within Taiwan, questions over the methods and funding sources of the Concentric Patriotism Alliance have swirled for some time. People in power has been investigating, posing as a mainlander who has recently moved to Taiwan. Our undercover researcher has been getting to know the group. Among the first things we learn is that co-founder Jiang Xiuye is running in this year's local elections. This conversation with a supporter confirms what many have long suspected, that the group pays people to attend its events. 
，品牌也不错啊，一天八百，一天九百块，他们八百，我九百，因为我叫人给他，他都很高兴，说叫的很好。The Concentric Patriotism Alliance is headed by 75-year-old Chao Hing Chuen. Originally from mainland China, Chao holds both Hong Kong and Taiwanese identity cards. In this video, he's in central Taiwan, marking the anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. But Chao was not always a believer. In 1984, he wrote a letter to the then British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, objecting to Hong Kong being handed back to China. His letter began, It is known to all that communist rule is characterized by suppression that leads only to bloodshed, deprivation and dire poverty. Clearly, Chao has since had a change of heart. But are Chinese authorities funding his political activities? Here's what Jiang Xiuye, co-founder and manager of the Concentric Patriotism Alliance, has to say. At the offices of the Taiwanese government, spokesperson Kolas Yotaka says more can be done to regulate all political groups. 我们现在就是希望透过修法，必须要管理，包括这些跟政府登记的社团，它各式各样的资讯要公开，包括财务。But even before changes to legislation, police have started to act. In early August, they raid the offices of another fringe party, the China Unification Promotion Party, and the home of its chairman, Chang Anle. On suspicion, the group was receiving funding from the Chinese government. Two days later, a crowd greets Chang as he arrives for questioning at Taipei's district court. He's arguably one of Taiwan's most controversial politicians. Also known as the White Wolf, Chang is a former mob boss who spent 10 years in prison in America and 17 years on the run in mainland China. He was arrested on returning to Taiwan in 2013 and released on bail hours later. Chang has since remade himself as a pro-unification politician. And while his party has no seats in the legislature, Chang's controversial past has kept it in the media spotlight. Chang's son, Chang Wei, shows up a little later. A travel agency managed by his wife has also been raided. He denies it was receiving money from the Chinese Communist Party, but confesses to something else instead. The interrogation lasts about four hours. Chang says he was mainly asked about relief efforts organized by his party following an earthquake in eastern Taiwan earlier this year. If as Chang leaves the district court, 
Chao Hing Chuen, the head of the Concentric Patriotism Alliance, and Jiang Su Ye, shout slogans in support of him. But in the privacy of their office, some Alliance regulars paint a far murkier picture of Chang and his party. <laughs> Chen Jiang Xin is a former member of Taiwan's main opposition party, the Kuomintang, and an independent candidate in upcoming elections. <laughs> it appears he also knows Chang An Le pretty well. Despite differences in their beliefs, some parties within the pro-unification camp have started coming together. On a Saturday afternoon in August, hundreds attend a banquet in Taipei. Wang Bingzhong's colleagues and members of Chang An Le's China Unification Promotion Party are also here. It's three months to the elections and campaigning has clearly started. The host is the Hongmen Association, sometimes referred to as the Freemasons of China. For now, that means bringing about peaceful unification between Taiwan and China. Liu believes this can happen if both sides adopt the one country, two systems model most often associated with Hong Kong. For 26-year-old Lin Yiying, that's not a workable system. A politician from the pro-independence New Power Party, she's been observing developments in Hong Kong and believes Beijing is not upholding its side of the bargain. Lin is running in local elections in the southern city of Tainan, traditionally a stronghold of President Chai's Democratic Progressive Party. Beijing, it seems, has been reaching out to young people here too. As a student, Lin and her classmates got to visit China on a highly subsidized tour. To find out if Beijing has been trying to influence politics at the grassroots level, we've come to see Chan Jing Chu. He's a pro-independence village chief in an area that has traditionally been pro-unification. This afternoon, he's busy showing some primary school children his offices. Chan says mainland Chinese academics have asked for similar tours.
During his first year in office, Chan was invited to visit China with a group of other village chiefs. Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council says these sorts of exchanges have been happening for some time. Back at the offices of the Concentric Patriotism Alliance in Taipei, Chief Chao Hing Chuen has decided to offer our undercover researcher a job. But first, he wants to see some ID. A little later, we find out why. It's clearly time to end the undercover assignment. But just before our researcher leaves, Chao receives a call. Ah, the Concentric Patriotism Alliance, China's Taiwan Affairs Office, and the Taipei Police don't respond to our requests for comment. Beijing's attempts to simultaneously intimidate and charm the Taiwanese public have drawn mixed results. An annual poll by the Taiwanese Public Opinion Foundation found more respondents viewing China favorably than unfavorably for the first time since the survey started. But in a separate survey conducted by the Mainland Affairs Council, 64.7% of respondents agreed that the Taiwanese government should take stronger steps to prevent infiltration by the Chinese government during cross-straits exchanges. For most Taiwanese, historical ties to China are hard to ignore. Culturally, the two sides have much in common. Like this traditional lion dance, these teenagers are learning in a village outside the capital, Taipei. Their teacher is village chief Qin Zhonghui. He's a supporter of Chai Ing-wen, but has also been criticized for leading other village chiefs on exchange visits to China. I Chin makes it a point to show us this creature, a lion unique to Taiwan. He says he supports democracy, but sidesteps the issue when we ask for his views on unification. It's an ambiguous and yet commonly held position in Taiwan. Recent calls for clarity mean its leaders will have to strike an increasingly delicate balance in a time of heightened tensions.